that time again for JPL in 30, the highlight show for the Jamaica Premier League. This week's show has a little bit of old and new as we close out the first round reschedule fixtures and begin round two in the nation's top flight. First up, Cavalier FC face off with Humble Lion in the opening midweek fixture. Here are the highlights. Welcome back to the National Stadium East Field for Jamaica Premier League action. Humble Lion versus Cavalier in this rescheduled fixture. There's a Gosum, got things going. And Cavalier, they show their intention there. Chanil Thomas turning well and firing directly to Briscoe. They would continue. First goal. Beautiful pass from Christopher Ainsworth to Gary Irving, the captain, and what a strike it was. In the seventh minute of play, the Sportsmax at moment of the game. What a finish. Briscoe beaten for pace. Left in bewilderment. They'd continue. And Atkinson loved the ball across. Janil Thomas, right on hand to slot it home. That was in the 20th minute of the game. An assist for Atkinson. And five goals this season for Janil Thomas. Showing his quality in front of goal. Vanzi tested, Jaden White. And no player from Humble Lion was uh, ready on hand to really slot home the advantage that they would have received from the rebound. Brian doing good work, getting by, getting the shot off, took a deflection from King. Gadel Irving played, played it into his own goal. Jaden White could do nothing about that. And there was a difficulty for Jaden White all ins out. Perhaps against the run of play, that goal was scored. And in the second, in the first half, again, another great opportunity for Humble Lion. Clear Clark getting on the end of that header, unable to bring it on target. It was certainly would have beaten Jaden White. Had a shot in the second half, did Clear Clark wide of the mark. Cavalier getting the, that shot. Roshane Sharp getting the block. Reed also testing the keeper. Briscoe had to make a save there in the dying moments of this encounter. And that was uh, that for this encounter. Cavalier getting the win. Here, the full time statistics. Only one shot on target from five attempts for Humble Lions, seven from eight. Great accuracy, week on week for Cavalier. 22 fouls, a split even. Two yellow cards shown to Humble Lion, one for Cavalier. Three offsides they had, they could have done better in watching the line. Five corners to Humble Lions, two. Five saves made by Briscoe, only one made by Jaden White. And uh, possession kind of leveled out in the second half, 53 to 47 for Cavalier with all the marbles, 2-1. Chanel, for a long period, even last season, you were struggling in terms of finding goals. Now you have five goals in this season. How happy are you about your performance and your goals that you set for this season? Um, I'm happy about the performance. I must thank my teammates for providing me with the goals that I've been scoring. Um, I'm being consistent and I like that. So Cavaliers seal their fifth win to march up to third in the Premier League standings, while Humble Lion dropped to 11th following their seventh loss of the campaign. We take our first break here on JPL in 30. Don't go anywhere. We have another mouth-watering encounter to come right after this. with us for JPL in 30. The second match saw the stars of the East taking on Dunbeholden FC. Let's pick up the full match highlights. 
Welcome to the National Stadium East Field in the St. Andrew, in the municipality of Kingston and St. Andrew. Rene for Jamaica Premier League action between Harborview and Dunby Holden. Live on your home of champions. Here's a look at the Harborview lineup. General Samuel in gold, Orderlin Harding, Ramin Brackenbridge, Akima Jones, Tadalu Chukwemeka, Kasim Priestley, Trey Bennett, Garth Stewart, Jashawn Anglin, Omar Thompson, Shaquille Bradford, their coach by Ludlow Bernard. Don't be holding. Then out of Saunders in goal, Siddiqui Burton, Shavoy Watkins, Zaki Wilkes, Shaquille Powell, Donovan Sigri, Shavan James, Rajay Smith, Stephen Williams, Stephen Barnett, and the schoolboy Brian Burkett, their head coach is Linworth Hyde. Carvel Banton sent this one off. And have a view, looked very purposeful. Good combination between Akimo Jones and Trey Bennett. Good presence of mind, got it to Shukwemeka. A deflection from Sigri brought it in the path of Shaquille Bradford. Eight goals for the number 38 from Harborview on loan from Waterhouse. What presence of mind, what alertness in the area. A real goal poacher, Shaquille Bradford. That was goal number one for Harborview. With the flag high. They were loving it. Rajay Smith would try to bring that one on target, but didn't go his way. Bradford, perhaps being a bit lucky to not have the off offside flag go up. But yeah, Justice in the end couldn't bring it on target. A great save that made by Samuel after Stephen Williams got through in the area and was able to test the goalkeeper. Header here and Garth Stewart doing well to prevent any damage from above you. Another dangerous moment to Sean Anglin, almost conceding in his own goal. He punched the air there, winning the penalty and converted it for Harbour View. 2 0 at that moment. With only a few minutes left in the game. And that was the end. Harbour View 2. Done beholding nil. Here are the stats. Three on target from seven attempts for Harbour View, five from 12 for Dunby Holden. 17 fouls to Dunby Holden's 14. Five yellow cards, three of them to Dunby Holden players. One offside to Harbour View. Five corners for Dunby Holden, only two for Harbour View. They, Glenroy Samuel made two saves and only one made by Saunders in goal for Dunby Holden. They had the majority of the possession, 59%, with Harbour View. They had the goals. Joshua, never an easy role within the defensive midfield responsibilities that you have. Um, but two goals on the season, a clean sheet for Harbour View, two wins in a row. How do you feel about your performance? Well, my performance, I want, I, I want to just, I just want to say thanks. Um, and my performance, I just, I just get a role to do. The coach gave us a role to do, so I just go out there, put out my, my, my work do the best what I can do and try to get a goal and that is what I did. Yeah, great conversion from you. I can tell you are overwhelmed in terms of the emotion, how you're feeling about your performance. The coach did say that when Joshua and Anglin plays well, Harborview has a good game. Yes, and that is true. Without me, it's like nobody else is on the team getting that role that what Joshua is doing can play that role like him. So the coach believe in me, believe in me and put, I, put me out there and tell us to go out there and do that role, and I give him the job. So Harborview pick up back-to-back -back wins to ease their way up the table to ninth place, whilst handing Dunby Holden their fourth loss of the season. Much more action still to come as we go to another break. Stay with us.
back to JPL in 30. The second round of the JPL got underway on Monday with another epic doubleheader. First up, Clarendon-based Beer United travelled to Kingston to take on Malines United. Let's check out those highlights. Ray and Nevue at Jamaica Premier League here at the National Stadium East Field. Look at that view. Lovely conditions here. Bear United against Malines United. 8 versus 12 in the top flight of Jamaica's football. Just Malines, just one place above the relegation zone. One point above the relegation zone as well. Ahead of Treasure Beach. And this is how their opponents will shape up Bear United. Osneil Reed, new between the sticks. No Roger Williams. That's a big miss. Brown, Beckford, Clark, Damian Thomas, newly into the starting lineup. Kemoy slowly. Nathaniel Howe, the schoolboy. Kareem McLean, Dunstan Cohen, the Denby United, Denby United, Denby High School star. Uh, Tevon Salmon, as well as Daniel Daly, is how they'll shape up. Of course, they are coached by Linval Dixon. Malines United, this is their starting 11 force change, of course, as we said, with Jeremy Nelson being out. And Taraj Andrews comes into the starting lineup. Enrique Gordon, the exciting wing back, is there as well. Sergini Frankson. And of course, a regular Peter Harrison between the sticks. Rashawn Livingston will partner Jason Wright up front. And Steve Reed comes into the midfield with Daniel Hardy and Javon Brown, who will play in front of the back four. The versatile midfielder Brown, who has played left back this season, played, has played left midfield and now playing through the spine. And his creativity, I think, important in terms of Malign's progression through the season. Ligé. Full match highlights, Carvel Banton in charge of this one. Malines driving forward early in their full blue kit with yellow trim right to Wilson and Wilson dragging his shot wide. In the end, Malines looked more positive, especially in the first half. Didn't really have many opportunities, but a lot of action in and around the 18 yard area. That was Daniel Hardy's attempt. Found a little bit of space, but was high and wide. Then this run from Howe. The teenager think he should have scored going for the far post. Probably the right idea, but give credit to Peter Harrison, who did very well. Then Jason Wright, second half, heading into the ground. Should have done better. And this from Beckford. Beckford was more of a spectator. Pushy Beckford in the in this match. 60 goal man in his Premier League career, but he really had nothing going, and that one was over the top. Then this, the first goal to break the deadlock after 49 minutes. Great pass from Wilson. Hardy's first touch was magnificent the way he took it down. And his finish clinical with the right boot into the far corner. Reed had no chance. And Malines were off and running. Then Jason Wright using his strength well to get into the area. It came again to Wilson who waited his pass superbly. Into the path of Rashawn Livingston who would score his first goal of this season. Malign second after 57 minutes. Their tall number 11 with the sports max at moment of the afternoon. 2 0 Malign's and three points in the back. Uh, the goal, the goal. Well, it was been working hard in training, you know. Uh, work, working, working in the final third, never getting it right, you know. Tonight, we came, came out strong and get the job done. And caps are, caps are after the lads, you know. And it's the first goal of the season. I, I think that Malines, you know, they need you to really come and score some goals, get some assists. Did you feel like there was a burden off your back to get that goal? Well, well yeah, yeah. You know, you know, we get one, so we have many more, many, many more to come. Yeah, I only can go forward from here. And it's been a tough start to the season so far, but you're gaining some momentum now. What is the mood like in the camp, especially after this win? Uh, the, the mood in the camp, well, you know, it, it, it now go perfect, but every, everything getting together well right now. As, as I can see, we're playing better, enjoying, enjoying the game. Yeah, so it's kind of more free now. Yeah, could have, definitely so we couldn't take the opportunity. I think we get way... We were in the game for, for the most part, especially in the first half, you know, and we could have capitalised on a, a chance that we get. We should have scored, you know, but so the nature of the game, you know, we come back out and we, 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 never, look, we never look really, really like we are into it, you know, and, and then the indiscipline started to creep in and, you know, hence we get two goals, you know, but 
we still have to get back and learn and 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 and, and, and really really meet with the players them you know have a meeting because you know I think a meeting would would have players express themselves how they feel and what's the problem and what's the situation because until we get that right you know then this team you know will will never push to to what we want and where we want to go you know so so it it it, it it's a work that we that we have to do and you know you, I, i'm sure you have but aspirations of getting into the top six what are your feelings like going into the rest of the season do you still think that this team has the quality that it takes to get into the playoff places. Well, we show that you know, we show that over over last over the over last year, you know, that you know we can we can fight with the big guys them and and, and, and beat them, you know. But today wasn't was it a day that you know we really come here to play, you know, the, everything just never never went well for us, you know. And we just look at it and 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 work for the next one to come. I mean, it has been teamwork, you know. We have a very good coaching staff, I have very good support uh, around me, so it makes my job a little bit easier. We have been working really, really hard in training and um, we've been really, really demanding a lot from the players and they have been responding well. And even today, you know, it was a really tight game, especially in the first half. The second half, though, decided by two really important moments. The final third at play, especially in the second half, was really bright by your team today. Yeah, we, 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 after the first half, we, we were kind of, I mean, turning over a little bit too fast, a little bit too easy. Uh, we spoke at halftime and um, we wanted to, to really open the pitch a little bit wider. And, and um, we, we had some switches, some good switches, and we got good, two good goals, you know, from two good um, switching of the point, points of attack. The Lions continue to turn things around on the new coach, Jermaine Thomas, as they pick up just their second win. The second match of the doubleheader on Monday saw Don Beholden FC back in action once again as they tackle Arnett Gardens and the returning Fabian Reed. Let's see how that panned out. The beautiful nice guys in the capital parish of Jamaica, Kingston and St. Andrew. We're here at the National Stadium East Field and just look at those lights for this big fixture, Don Beholden the 2022 finalists against five-time champions Arnett Gardens. Ricardo Thomas was a part of that Waterhouse team, then came across to this Tumba Holding team. Damian Hyatt is back between the sticks. That would be a good sign for them. He was out the week before. Burton Watkin is, remains in the starting lineup, and Wilkes will be his partner in the back line. Shaquille Powell and Donovan Sikri. Fabian McCarthy, a big name back. He was out with a hamstring injury last time out. Roger Smith, Stephen Williams. Thomas, who we mentioned, and Nicholas Nelson, their leading goal scorer, back in the starting lineup with six goals. This is how Arnett Gardens will shape up, as we mentioned. Eric Edwards still injured, so Asha Hutchinson, the teenager, is there. Shane Watson, Philander Wing, Gerald Neal will partner uh, Joel Cunningham. Marlon Martin is back from injury, their defensive midfielder as well. Jamon Shepard, Jaheim National Thomas, the impressive 20-year-old midfielder. Fabian Reed, they have a present goal scorer. Warner Brown. The talented former stats forward and Shea Smith will add some width as well. Their number 11 and spent a lot of time at Holy Trinity where he went to school. Two impressive lineups. How you like in Arnett Gardens? The full match highlights Stefan Dewar, FIFA central referee in charge of this fixture. And quite a busy one it was early. Nicholas Nelson took that nicely. Thought he had a real Shout for a penalty on that occasion, wasn't given. And then this move. The strike first by Stephen Williams, a follow-up by Nelson, who must have thought he found the back of the net. But Asha Hutchinson, with a brilliant save, save of the season for me. And part of what made him be the unanimous man for the play of the match. Then this opportunity for Brian Burkett had to score there. 20 goals in his schoolboy season this season, Brian Burkett. And I'm sorry, but that should have been his second of his Premier League season. Missed a chance over the top. And that was the story of Dumble Holden's evening. Chances that not converted. That one was for Powell. And Asha Hutchinson with another telling save. Then that was put in the back of the net, but Nelson was offside. And Dumble Holden just couldn't find their way past and it guns legally at least. Nelson then with this. And this was the same save again from Hutchinson. Big save it was. This is just another angle of it. And then Nelson, he had a finish, but he was offside. Thought he had number seven on the season. 
to match last year's season, Nelson, but it wasn't to be. Then on at Gardens, this moment, lovely pass by Kelsen, but the first touch from Warner Brown was something to behold, how he took that into his stride. Had the first strike, look at his first touch from Warner Brown, exquisite. The strike was well saved by Damian Hyatt, but he could do nothing by the follow-up of Fabian Reed, who added his second of the season Reed. He wasn't going to miss from there, and Dumbo Holden were beaten against the run of play. And he says to everyone in the crowd, it's me, I can do no wrong. Kelson, he had opportunities after coming off the bench, that with his Rico right foot, couldn't pass Hyatt. And then Nelson pending one, but Asher Hutchinson was just too good on the day, Hutchinson. Then again, in good position in making it difficult for Nelson, who toe poked that across the area to Powell. And his shot was wide. 1 0 to the junglist after 90 minutes. Yeah, Asher Hutchinson, man of the match, excellent display, some great saves, but judging by your calm demeanor, I'm guessing, guessing this is just something that you're used to. Kinda. And you know, he came into the team usually when he get a run in the Iron team. Yeah, extremely successful. Is that something that's your aim for you this season? Yes, it's a lot of hard work. And you know, last season you got that national call up. Is that something that you're seeking out again? Definitely. I know this Iron Guys team, they're a quality team. You missed out on the title last season. Do you want to win it all this year? That's my aim for this season. Yeah, um, to be honest, I must give credit to Dom the They did a lot of things and we just we just couldn't manage them, especially in the first half. You know, I was happy that way. We got the half-time break. I mean, they really um, put us to the sword. Um, and and we, were, we were fortunate to, to have gone in 0-0 at the half-time. Uh, we made some adjustments. They still came back at us. Um, they, were, they, they came aggressive. Um, and um, I thought that we, 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 we managed a little bit better in the second half. Um, and, and, and it was a game where we, we managed to, to, to score um, our opportunity, and they didn't. And it, and it must be said, um, you were struggling a bit, and I really think that your substitute, especially Rashiki Kelson, made such a huge difference to the tempo of the game in particular. Yeah, and that was what we needed. You know, I, I didn't think we were handling the ball good enough in the middle. You know, um, in, in stages, in patches, we did well to get it, but when we, we got to the, to the middle third, we just, we just gave it back right to them. You know, and, um, He's very good on the ball, and we wanted that. We thought that he could have made a difference at that point in time. And I mean, and, and, and he did. So I saw the football go. I love how the team play. For most part of the game, we had control, we were passing the ball, we were moving well off the, the ball. We created numerous uh, uh, chances that we could have, should have put away. But when you don't do them things, they go score for them. I like the cliche thing, you know. We just need to step up, train harder and come again. It, the league not finishing until June and we are in the top six, so we have to try and maintain that, that position and, and try to go up the scale. So, I'm pleased with what I see tonight. I see some improvement in our play. I see some improvement in the attitude of the players on the pitch. Just we just have to continue work and hope we'll get it right the next game. You know, um, this, Chris and I were saying on commentary that this is one of the better attacking performances we've seen from him this season, but he couldn't get the goal. Mm. Is Before the game, you mentioned that it was the defence that was letting you down. You didn't keep the clean sheet, but mm. I'm sure you still have a little bit of a concern about the attack. No, the goalkeeper step up. And the goal it was excellent tonight. He's the one that caused us not to score a goal tonight. He made two brilliant saves, but I thought it would be in the back of the net. But I saw it go with us have to come again. I saw football go with us have to continue working and build a chemistry and a love day in the camp. And that we need to do, you know. Well, this is how the table looks now after that Arnett Gardens win. They move up to fourth position. They leave from Tivoli into fourth. Dumble Holden still in sixth position with 21 points. Two ahead of seventh place, Waterhouse, who will have a match. Mount Pleasant and Portmore, of course, still in the top two, 28 and 27, respectively. Treasure Beach and Lime Hall, the two recently promoted teams. Well, they are in the relegation zone. Malines with their win today. Move up to 11 points, four away from the drop zone, and that was a big three points for Jermaine Thomas and his team. And as you can see, there you have Cavalier and Arnett as well in the playoff spots which is where they like to remain hence they are in the green and yet yeah, very united who play today as well remain in eighth position after that loss with 18 points and you just never know what harbour view and montego bay united may come up with 
and Veer could be in some trouble in terms of moving further down in this Jamaica Premier League table. Of course, the top six teams qualify for the playoffs. The two automatic, for top two automatic to the semi-finals. And that's how we put a wrap on JPL in 30 on your home of champion Sportsmax. Tune in next week for another exciting edition.